This is Varlamor, Old School RuneScape's newest land expansion. And this is Varlamort. He's kind of stuck here forever. His goal is to complete every piece of content within the kingdom of Varlamor, all on a fresh ultimate Iron Man. No banking, no trading, and no leaving. Twilight's Promise. It's the second quest in the Varlamor questline and grants access to the Quetzal transport system. Navigating Varlamor is currently a huge pain, with no ways to train agility, no energy potions or teleports, I'm stuck walking around everywhere. But to complete Twilight's Promise, I need 40 combat. I'll also have to use two different attack styles to kill a level 81 knight. With low level gear and limited food, this fight will prove to be quite the challenge. But I have a plan. My best in slot melee weapon for probably the next year is the rune mace. Getting this item will almost guarantee my victory. In the last episode, I collected steel swords and sold them to the general stores for 130 GP each. But I found out that Eclipse Wines, on the third story of the Hunter's Guild, sell for 400 GP each in the general stores. Hey, it's a shield upgrade, let's go. Hill Giants are one of what I consider to be the big three. The big three are the three most important monsters I will be killing on Varlamor. I will cover the other two later on in this video. Each of the big three have unique drop tables with items that we can't get anywhere else on Varlamor. For example, the Hill Giant drop table is our only access to most non-elemental runes, like cosmic runes and law runes. They also drop limpet roots, which are very good for herb lore training, and of course the big bones, which will be good for prayer training. Speaking of runes, the maze random event will also be one of the main sources of runes. You can get a few hundred of elemental runes and arrows by opening the chests in the maze, not clicking through the dialogue, and waiting for them to reset. Just make sure you have enough inventory spots to actually get the items from the chests. Ooh, that's another shield upgrade, let's go! Any upgrade is vital at this point in the account. First ever mystery box on the account. I have a very rare chance of getting a rune square shield or a dragon med from these, but it's an onion. I haven't done this random event since like 2008, but this gives me a lot of fishing XP and I'm only level one. There is a small net fishing spot in the park in Barlamor, but the first 10 fishing levels are the worst in my opinion. Let's see how much XP I get from this. Oh, that is a lot actually. Seven fishing, oh that's huge. The worst fishing levels are out of the way now and I can get everything I need for future fishing levels at the Sunset Coast just southwest of here. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 attack, the biggest level on the account so far. 40 attack means I can now wield the rune mace. There is a mace shop in Varlamor, and for only 18,000 gold, I can buy my best in slot melee weapon for months to come. I'm 99% sure the next best in slot weapon is the dual Mako Hoodle from Perilous Moon's dungeon, and that will be a hell of a grind. I'm sure I will have to get nearly max combat stats to do that dungeon in the gear that I have. By the way, this is where I have been noting my limpet roots. There's a tool leprechaun super close to the hill giant spawn. If you didn't know, tool leprechauns note most farming supplies like herbs and secondaries. Maces are one of the most overlooked weapons in RuneScape, but I'll be looking at this weapon every day. This is actually the third best rune weapon with a four tick attack cycle. It's at the same speed as a scimitar. My only reason to use the Addy Skimmy now will be for the slash bonus. If there's a monster that's weak to slash over crush, then the Skimmy will be my best option. But the rune mace will be my go-to. It is finally Twilight's Promise time. My combat stats should be high enough to take on all the bosses I'll have to kill. Five second rundown of the quest so far. You help some knights and steal some stuff and sun god Varlamor, yeah. Okay, so from what I have read about this boss, every four hits you do, he will change protection prayers for the style you're using. So four melee hits, he'll turn protect for melee on, and you'll have to switch to range or magic and then he'll use protect from range after the four ranged hits. So I brought iron knives. There's an iron knife spawn in the Hunter's Guild and these things attack super fast. So I hope I can just use melee the whole way. Doesn't matter if I don't hit anything with range. Oh yes, that worked perfectly. Hopefully this knight doesn't hit me too hard, but honestly this Addy armor is putting in work.
my man did a total of 40 damage to me. I was worried about nothing. But I do have six more monsters to kill. They're level 34, so it should be super easy. Alright, Mr. Renu, take this feed and be mine forever. Quetzals unlocked, and I'm actually about to go to an area I have never been before. The Teomat. I'm gonna explore this area after I finish the quest. Maybe there's some cool things around here. I guess this guy died or something. I mean, I don't read chat dialogue, so I have no idea what happened throughout this quest. But, quest completed. 3,000 thieving XP, access to the Quetzals, and when I get 54 magic, I can use the Fortis Teleport to Tele to Varlamor. Now I'm gonna do a little Varl exploring. <laughs> Allow me to introduce the second member of the Big Three. Moss Giants are similar to the Hill Giants in their drops, with increased rates and quantities of runes, herbs, and seeds, as well as giving us our next best in slot shield. There's also a very good Mind Rune and Earth Rune spawn around the Mosh Giants, which is vital to future magic training, as all of our rune drops will come from monster drops and random events until we unlock Cam Torm. A little bit of day one Varlamor trivia for you guys. With the help of some spaghetti code from Jagex, this air rune was unstackable. You can get 28 air runes in your inventory. You couldn't bank them, but I wonder if there's any accounts that will just have 28 air runes in their inventory forever. Someone most likely put the wrong air rune item ID when developing this portion of Varlamor. Sources say they're from the Furring the Lumbridge guide portion of the Recipe for Disaster quest, but it was patched only a few hours later and now you try to pick the air rune up and it does not let you at all. I was so looking forward to this air rune spawn as it would have cut a lot of time out of the magic grind for me. The only exceptions I've made on this account so far are the Druidic Ritual and Rune Mysteries quest. These are so I can lamp the herb lore skill and rune crafting skill for the Perilous Moon requirements. I want to maintain the region locked integrity of this account as much as I can. The biggest obstacle for the Varlamar locked UIM is the 48 Slayer requirement for the Perilous Moons quest. There are no ways to train Slayer and lamping that to 48 would take years. Thankfully though, Jagex has implemented more XP random events. After collecting the full set of a random event outfit, you receive an XP lamp from that random event instead of a duplicate piece of the outfit. But this is not the case for an Ultimate Iron Man. Ultimate Iron Man cannot get different pieces of the outfit unless I have the previous piece. If I get the shirt first and drop the shirt, on the next time I get the random event, I will get the shirt again. My only way around this is to make a fancy dress box in my player owned house. This allows me to store every piece of random event clothing in the game. Currently, you have everything you need to train construction on Varlamor. You have teleports, nails, bars, planks, hammers, but there are no saws in sight. Without a saw, construction is a dead skill. I need 10 construction to complete the Perilous Moons quest and 27 construction to complete at first light. But there is some hope. In the far southwest corner of the map, you can see a little portion of the next part of the Varlamore expansion. There's a player owned house portal as well as some willow trees, which are not accessible on Varlamore just yet. The next expansion could unlock everything for us. But for now, I cannot touch the construction skill, and I don't want to lamp it to 10 until the next expansion releases. I also won't be making any other exceptions until the land expansion. If it turns out that I have to lamp 48 Slayer, 17 Hunter, 20 Runecrafting, and 10 Construction just to complete the Perilous Moons quest, then so be it. The last member of the Big Three. Bandits. They've done some very bad things, and are our best source of air runes and chaos runes. And that's about it. I will be killing a lot a lot a lot of these bandits. They drop 8 air runes at a time, 6 chaos runes at a time, and I will need thousands of those. Almost 25 hours in, and I still haven't gotten an XP random. Another huge beautiful level. 40 defense. I can wear rune if there was any rune on this island. There are rare impling spawns, so I could potentially get good stuff from the ninja implings and dragon implings. Of course, there is that chance at a rune square shield from the mystery boxes, but that won't happen. There are low tier impling spawns on Varlamor, but I don't have access to a butterfly net. If there's a way to get to Puro Puro on Varlamor, I can get a free butterfly net, 
If I get a butterfly net, I'll only have to lamp to 17 hunter for baby implings and not 20. I'll have to hop a bunch of worlds in this wheat field and see what's up. 1000 gold to purchase my very first house. I am currently on a journey. I'm searching every nook and cranny of Varlamore to see if there's a salt spawn. I'm gonna get a spade, see if I can dig in random places and just search everything I can. Hey yo, there's an oak shortbow spawn up here and a black robe for magic training. This might be our best in slot bow for a very, very long time until we can get the bowstring from an impling or find another way to do that. I am in the midst of unveiling Varlamore's deepest secrets. There's this guy roaming around Varlamore, Rue Merald. In three different places around Varlamore, he asks you to dig near a tunnel that is very close to him. He says he will add the knowledge to his reserves, whatever that means. You find a ruby, sapphire, and emerald, and on the last location, he tells you something a bit interesting. There may be more than this than meets the eye. Varlamore has a very big secret, and I will do everything I can to find it out. This is why I need your help. I have met a bunch of different Varlamore locked accounts, each with different restrictions and ways to play. If you're a fellow Varlamore locked account, or if you just have a love for the land, join the Varlamort clan chat. Man, I was hoping there was a way that I could maybe enter this city, but I need the requirements to even start the quest. Hey, it's about time. The only reason to make a Jagex account. Free XP lamps. Let's go, you're going right on Hunter. Man, just look at it. I know you have my saw. One of the weirdest random events on RuneScape. But that fishing XP though. Farming will be one of the biggest skills for Varlamort. At a higher level, I can plant a bunch of useful seeds and the rewards from the hunter rumors give access to most potion secondaries. Things like bird's nest for brews, and I'm sure those will be 100% vital to complete the Fortis Colosseum in like 5,000 years from now. Farming on a Varlamore locked account is basically just pickpocketing the master farmer for seeds, but since I have no bank, I have to either sacrifice a few inventory spaces to hold a bunch of seeds, or just pickpocket the master farmer before every farming run. The marigolds in the flower patch grant 100% immunity to diseases from potatoes, onions, and tomatoes. And those are the most common seeds from the master farmer, so I'll probably be doing those for a while. Hey, about time another XP random. I'm currently trending to 50 thieving to unlock the best money making method on Varlamore, pickpocketing the wealthy citizens. Until I get 12 herb lore for strength potions, cleaning herbs is my only way to get herb lore XP. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to be very, very wealthy. The way this new thieving method works is that if you wait for a little kid to distract a wealthy citizen, you can automatically pickpocket them about 10 to 15 times. You have a chance of getting house keys, and these house keys allow you to break into a house and steal valuables that you can trade in for a lot of money. You also have a chance at getting some jewelry when you thieve from the houses. Believe it or not, the RuneScape community is still super helpful. This dude pretty much told me everything I needed to know. Basically, there's three houses that you can steal from. You wait for the owner to leave, and you steal from the chests or wardrobe or whatever you want. Occasionally, there will be an arrow that comes over one of the thievable objects in the house. It'll give you a nice XP boost and a bunch of valuables. You'll get a notification in their chat box when the owner is about to return home. At that point, you just jump out the nearest window as fast as you can. If you get caught, you'll get kicked out of the city. Okay, that is my sign to get out of here. This is really good thieving XP, you guys, and 59 valuables from one house. I want to see how much money this is when I turn it in. And talk to this shady dude over here. 59 valuables for 3.2k. Not bad, and the jewelry will be a nice addition as well. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm going to start the magic grind from hell in the next episode. Don't miss it.